I'm delighted to be here on this occasion, especially on the National Convention to promote and to create awareness in regarding to non-communicable diseases. In fact, I was happy to see my young brother, Dr. Santosh, who is here, who has a, a keen nerve for, to dedicate his time and energy for the society. So, all my blessings to him. And in fact, uh, all the doctors on the days, Dr. Hemlata Garu, Dr. Sham Garu from Idea Clinics, Dr. Bhavani Garu, Professor Sarangdev from ISB, Dr. Rakesh, Professor Samasivai Garu, and uh, a entrepreneur who is contributing for the welfare of the people, Mr. Vikram, Dr. Umagaru, Adevidanga, Ikrikocheshna, Doctors, Fraternity, Sammandinchina, Adevidanga, Endocrinology, Sammandinchi, Anekamandi, Doctors of Patu, Vivida Stilo Panjasthavana, Itar Mithulandarki, Vridepurakanga, Nauskaral Telejastu. In fact, when I was being called for this meeting, I was wondering why a IT minister has been called. It's absolutely a pure medical convention. When Dr. Sham was just mentioning about how technology can be fused, can be embraced. Uh, to further the welfare of the people through intervention by the technology. Definitely, I appreciate what Professor Sarangdev was just ascribing. Here, I would like to adjust, I was entering into the hall, I was just wondering uh, what is the diet provided over there during the lunch? So I was just thinking about maybe it should be a solid lunch today on Sunday and many people would have come from across the globe and across the, uh, our India too and they would be definitely the host would be I think uh, the idea clinics who is hosting this program will definitely see the best of the feast is being provided in Hyderabad and Hyderabad as you know is almost a cuisine capital most famous for our biryani many people would know. So I was just thinking, you know, to start with, we have just crossed this prevention stage. In lighter way, I'm just telling, because everybody loves good food. Nobody can resist. I don't think God can resist a good food, right? So when we literally think about, and when we study in our schools, in colleges and in the universities, always, either it may be back home, we keep saying prevention is better than cure. This is the common phrase. In real world, are we trying to ascribe to that? Sometimes it is humanly possible, sometimes it may not be possible, sometimes the great grit and the determination from the individuals or the society can I help them bring this terminology into literal action, prevention. Wherein the government has said by Mr. Vikram and uh, Professor Sarang, you know, government plays a vital role in regulating the policies. I do understand, but the, reg the government also goes by what doctors say, what doctors want or doctor fraternity wants or what the hospital means to us over a period of 70 years if you look how we have developed our services especially the medical services if you have seen if you have literally viewed many doctors over here
who have rich experience in terms of uh, giving treatment or accessing the best medical uh, prescription would have been known for the past 70 years it's been evolving it's been evolving evolution definitely we can't compare with a 400 year uh, freedom nation like US or any other European nations which have the rich democratic political wisdom they had all through that years of three to four hundred years. Now we've been learning actually. We've been learning how best we can in, uh, extend our medical services to the people. I can definitely say if you compare with 1.4 billion population, the size of population, how a doctor here, either it may be from the government side or it f is it from private side, I can still say that, you know, given the varied, the economic disparities of our people, the quality of medical attention given and also the time frame a doctor attends to a patient, it definitely be, is appreciable when you compare with the US nation. Because I had been to a couple of hospitals when my cousins and my mother had a little problem over there in US. It took hell a lot of time to get a simple x-ray done. The same patient from India, if he has been made to sit for eight to nine hours, nine to nine hours to have a simple x-ray or CT to be done, you know, the patient will be emotionally, will be getting disturbed. So, you know, the, the time, the energy and the response time given by any doctor, even if it is in the public sector or in the private sector, comparatively, it is too fast. It's too fast. When it comes to quality, they definitely it all depends to doctor to doctor. It all depends to hospital to hospital. It all depends upon the intent of the individuals or the hospitals or the clinics which they turn to serve their patient. In India culturally, any doctor is, we all think, that any patient will always think, who is next to God is a doctor. No other profession comes into being, whether you are a good, uh, great public servant or a great political executive. When it comes to doctor, if a doctor goes or the minister goes or the prime minister goes, attends, if a patient sees his doctor, first he'll greet the doctor itself. So that is the value which has been imparted to an Indian doctor. We shouldn't mix that context link of cultural history, what we have, how people look, doctor, at the next God. So keeping all this in view, what we do for a period of time, I have I endured my political journey for the past 25 years. Got into politics in 99, going through it, one of the main key uh, subject for my constituents is medication. When I try to attend to the needs of, to the near and dear, I encounter so many doctors. I go to so many hospitals. I always look upon the quality and also their intent to see the patient with lots of interest and maybe, you know, a very skillful doctor or very a success doctor can't even spare a half a second to see a doctor. That also sometimes pains a patient. 
this is all uh, things what I have seen. I am just expressing my uh, experiences with you. At the same time, the doctor Movi is too confident enough in his skill that in a half a second or a second or in a minute, he could be able to really diagnose and he could be able to really give the medication to the patient. The point here I would like to mention here is, you know, when a doctor hears to a patient with patients for a two minutes that will, you know, cure the patient psychologically to an extent. I always believe in the spiritual thing too and uh, it's all connected. When you are spiritually very, very strong, no diseases can come down to you. But if we see our cultural legacy, spiritual legacy, still what Madam was just telling about 56.4% Indian population has a disease burden. This is a huge number. Definitely, if you see, it's a big burden on the nation. How well we can prevent it? The prevention starts when, you know, mother conceives. The day one, when a new life comes into existence in this world, then we should think of something. Before that itself, I think the prevention should arise. From there, then the journey of the new life comes into being. How does the mother, how does the doctor, how does the family, the husband or the family treats the new life is most important. Because of poverty, over a period of time, these things are not at all, was not at all countable because the bare existence for the family was the great thing for the family. But the new life, emotionally, they would take and celebrate. But the point there is they wouldn't have, if they would like to put in their resources for a healthy lifestyle, they wouldn't had had all these years. Certain section of the people still don't have, sorry to say, but still don't have that luxury of giving great nutrition to the new life. That's where we start. That's where the government comes into picture. Over a period of time, the evolution, the government conceived so many policy initiatives with whatever the budgetary constraints they had. The nutritional issues have been addressed. The nutritional issues in terms of uh, mothers, in terms of now if you can see from the school itself, before the school itself, you know, government has a special initiative through the central government and the state governments. We have so many initiatives to give a healthy diet to all the kids, starting from, you know, age three till they finish their degree courses of exam. So whatever the government does is one part, whatever the individual does is one part, whatever the doctors who treat the patient is another part. So as rightly told uh, by uh, the elders in the days, definitely on behalf of government over a period of time, the budgetary spending has also been increased. If you see from 60s till now, 60s till now, whether it is a union government or is a state government, the budgetary spending is slightly increasing, but many people won't agree. It is not equal to what is being expected. At least 6 to 9 percent of the total budget size should be spent on 
the health. That's what many doctors have been prescribed now in the last budgetary exercise, what we took before our parliamentary elections, from day after we have uh, budget sessions. Already we post 6% of our total budget to be provided for this health sector. You know, Professor Sarangdev, definitely, if you would like to give some suggestions on the part of this budget exercise, you're welcome. Because this is the initiative what we would like to take it. And second thing is creation of infrastructure. Not only the creation of infrastructure, we also have to see that doctors are available. In many places, if you see, except in uh, cities like Hyderabad or tier two or three three cities, doctors are generally not available. I can say from my remote consciences, if we try to request the doctors to come and serve at the government hospitals with many incentives, many doctors won't tend to come there. And one way of, you know, it's, it all depends. So many factors comes into picture. The economic factor, the social factor, the luxury factor, a basic necessities factors for the families. All these things come in, uh, into factor and that many of doctors would tend to settle down, settle down in cities. So if you have seen, if you have literally viewed in the year 2012, then government of ours, trying to create qualitative medical infrastructure, not only in terms of physical. We have prescribed and we have made a mandate and regulated a policy that whoever does their graduation in medicine in this state, then it was a competitive state, they have to mandatorily be doing one year of a rural service. So this went on for a couple of years. Our government changed. There was a, you know, everything, in democracy, everything runs on the lobby, right? You know, that lobby was too powerful and that mandated policy has been diluted and it has moved away from. So that was the real reason, you know, it would have been a win-win situation for a doctor too, who would become, who would have seen so many rare cases of the patients and they, that could have enabled them to become a good doctor. They missed that part. And in fact, from the government side, the people would have got the best of the doctors to come and aid in the primary treatment. We missed that bus. But tomorrow, today too, our health minister, who is also a very educated and progressive looking minister, I just been thinking about it, there's huge pressure not to put that. So these are all, you know, what I say, professional difficulties, what we political executive face time and again. But we have to overcome all those things. And uh, coming down to, before I speak about technology, coming down to what Dr. Santosh was mentioning about state health policy. Definitely, it's a good suggestion which has been given by my young brother. You know, we are deriving so many policies which were not there after this new state has been formed. So in the process, we are also thinking about having a health policy too. This national convention of yours, definitely, you know, this session of yours, earlier morning session, which many doctors would have taken part, the best suggestions from your side is always invited on behalf of government. And I would definitely take all your good suggestions too and forward it to 
our colleague, Honorable Minister, Health Minister, and also to our Honorable Chief Minister. Before we make the health policy, we have to literally see what basically the patients or our people in Telangana require. First is affordability. We always see the welfare is a prime criteria because it's a welfare state. India is a welfare state. We always see the affordability of the people to attain the basic medical facilities. So to extend the affordability, our health policy will be evolved. This is a prime and basic principle what we will try to ascribe to it. And also see that the quality of the treatment should be unparalleled with, if you compare with any other corporate big hospitals medication. That is also the next criteria what we would like to keep it in mind. And in health policy, we would like to ascribe to how best we can use the technology to see that the technology helps to get the medicine at the lowest price, the advent of AI or many disruptive technologies which is coming into picture, the new age technologies, cutting edge technologies or the digital technologies which will help a doctor, a pharma company or a paramedic to see that they can give the best medical attention to a patient. So the policy will be all comprehensive. The policy shall look into the best suggestions what you will be giving it to us. And I think this is the right time. May not be in this assembly session we will try to project our policy, but in next session to come, definitely your suggestion will be seen in a very positive manner. When um, uh, a doctor on the days was speaking on medical tourism policy, I am happy to note that and I am uh, to share the news that we are coming up with a medical tourism policy. And we have been inviting, we have been inviting many players from the globe to partner with this state and to invest in this state on a big level. Maybe the next visit of our Honorable Chief Minister to US is going to attract a very, very big player who is into the medical tourism. I, you know, I know the name, but I couldn't, I will not able to really share before it's been signed. So medical tourism policy, we are going to Anvil now, and many players from all over the globe will be a part and parcel to sail with us, to partner with our state. This is our vision, and at the same time, you know, our favorite subject and the new age technology, right now is everybody speaks of artificial intelligence, AI. In each and every scope of the human life, tomorrow, in one form or other, everybody knows even it be a doctor, even it is an advocate, even it is an engineer, or if it pertains to a government servant, the AI is coming. How shall we embrace the technology? How shall we harness the technology? And see that the quality of the life of an individual is being improved. If we don't embrace the technology which is coming, you know, somebody will be embracing, somebody will be harnessing that technology, and we will be pulled backward. That's the real reason the government at the highest level in the state are thinking of. In all streams, in all verticals of our economy, we would like to embrace it, and we will harness it to the extent possible that each and every individual of this state should take the advantage of advent of this 
artificial intelligence. That's the real reason we have a couple of things on mind and you would be seeing in the next three to four months how we are trying to put up, put the, all those things into action. I had gone to a convention in one of the biggest corporate hospitals in Hyderabad. One of the visiting professor who is a big doctor in a different country who harnessed this AI technology, who is basically a dental doctor. He was presenting how AI will influence the medical field. So I was too curious to know because I am from a different background, not from a technology background as said by my brother, I'm basically a lawyer. So I was just thinking how it will be helpful for him how doctors, if they don't try to embrace it, will become redundant, in times to come may become absolute also. So when he was trying to show the technology and reflect the technology, he just asked one guy in the convention, what are your problems, what are you facing in specific to your dental issues. Then that uh, young man was telling about he has some problem that uh, root canal and all those things. So that computer was also recording it. And three point five version. You know, he just entered and he told another dental doctor of this famous hospital to write the prescription for it. Before, before the doctor prescribed, what would be the medication? In the split of second, when he had put what is the best medication for this problem, before doctor prescribed it, the same except one percent differential. The same medication has been provided by the AI who has been sitting on the other side. So we're just asking him in a very informal way. Yeah, then, you know, most of the clerks will come and uh, they can occupy the stage of a doctor. The doctor told, you know, I have already imbibed the technology into my practice. And I've been trying to see that how I can outcome the technology and see that I still exist for the patient. Otherwise, the patient can do, go directly and take the prescription. But now as such, all over the globe, there is no such because there were uh, mandated legislations. Until and doctors prescribed it, no uh, medical store can give the medicine. But still in times to come, you know, it's all AI driven now. Once we press the button, the medical shops will also come to at the doorstep and delivers. You know, that sort of technology will be evolving. I see if you don't embrace the AI, either it is endocrinology or different verticals of your medicine, you know, it becomes so difficult to survive in this competitive field. As you, we all know that, you know, you all go through the rigorous exercise of passing out your bachelor's, then you're doing master's, then you're doing super specialization, and couple of specializations going to uh, different institutions all over the globe, then only the patient recognizes you. Nowadays, the consciousness has increased. And people keep asking also, are you an MBBS doctor or a PG or you have, you, does you have a super speciality? So when it comes to competition, there is heavy competition, I can see. A lot many colleges are also coming up. The qualitative education and the qualitative management of the different institutions also makes an impact. And the best, the cream, as you know, the government attracts in their colleges. And ultimately, the good doctors are provided by either from the private sector or also pub public sector. So, when I mean to say that, what needs to be done? So, government has taken all the cues from so many doctors, from your fraternity. And our chief minister and our health minister are thinking of uh, providing a health profile card separately to the residents of Telangana, wherein 
you know, each and every individual of this state will be provided with a health card. The technology will be involved in that. The, we will use all the technologies, the latest technologies, and try to give a health card to an individual. From the day one of his birth, till he goes to a doctor, or till he goes to treatment, or if he doesn't go to a doctor, when he lives his healthy life too, what is his story? The behind, what is story before? If he goes for the treatment, what would be? Any doctor, if he would be going for medication, the doctor at one go will be knowing the history of the patient and he can deliver the best medication because a couple of hours, we see the primary treatment will be done in Mantani, in my constituency, then it goes to Karim Nagar, then the doctor otherwise prescribes some other medication and when it comes to nerves, it come, he comes to Hyderabad. So what doctor sitting in a big hospital and super speciality hospital who has so much of rich experience at the click of button will know the history of the patient and can give the best medication. This is one objective of our health card and also see that and doctor can also ascribe because we may make it mandatory for each and every individual for a regular mandatory checkup. So that can give a great impetus. So this also will uh, create a healthy citizen. So these are all preventive steps what on behalf of government we are trying to visualize. This also will be in our health policy. So these are all things what we would try to ascribe to our new health policy. And coming down to the dangerous levels of you know, diabetic patients increasing day by day. You know, now as told by doctor, 21% among men and 18% among women. And when it comes to hypertension, 36 and 29% for men and women is highly alarming. At the same time, if you look, you know, always see the West as uh, glossy, dreamy and greenery. But, you know, if you see the opacity and high, high, you know, BP patients over there, they are more in number. The more in number, if you, because when you compare the statistics and percentage wise, it's about 1.4 billion population. Here, the population is comparatively less. But still, we are not going to take the example of some developed nation. We are still developing. We are putting our technology. We are using our energies. We will try to infuse the budgetary exercise on to that and see that we create a healthy, better citizen of, for this state, for the nation. This is our policy and after 10 long years and also this is the first time after Telangana has been formed, we formed the government. We are for pro-poor, we are for a qualitative health care and we will see that, you know, with the rich and experienced doctors sitting here in Hyderabad and all through Telangana. We will take their expertise into our account and see that a, a healthy Telangana will be evolved in times to come. And I appreciate and I welcome all the doctors in the days and all the doctors and the young doctors also I see. I appreciate and welcome all the suggestions, you know, what you would like to ascribe to this government and a couple of sessions of this will definitely be useful and trying to create a positive environment, not only in Tenangana, all through the nation, what preventive steps should be taken by any individual in creating and fostering a healthy life for all the individuals of our nation. I once again thank the organizers and uh, I thank the organizers for, uh, you know, 
making this opportunity to meet the best of the doctors who are sitting here, the talent who has been sitting there. I thank you one and all. Thank you.